When you first drive into the paddock, it's important to select a site that is typical of the whole paddock, that we're not selecting uh, obscure sites or sites where animals camp uh, near water troughs or feed troughs, etc. So we've selected this site as something typical of the rest of the paddock. This is a handheld Garmin unit that I use for recording the exact location of each soil core in the paddock. Each position can then be downloaded onto Google Earth to give the grower uh, an exact picture of where the samples were taken for future reference. If you do not have one of these, you can simply download an app on your mobile phone which will do a near similar job. At each, each core, I simply press mark and enter to record the position. Once the core has been sampled to the required depth, the core is then put on the back of the trailer where we would uh, look at it at various steps and put into the buckets. So we've taken the soil core and we have it on the back of the trailer now, so what does it really mean? What can we gather from a physical assessment of the soil core? This is the top here we can see that the soil is a lot more loose, it's a lot more friable and well structured here. As we continue down the profile, it still remains very high clay soil, but it does not have the friability as the top bit. This is very important because most of our biology are within this sort of top 10 to 15 centimetres of the soil due to water holding capacities and the gases coming in and out of the soil. As we can see when we break it up, it is very friable. All of this helps to meet the requirements of the plant as well as the biology that live in this part of the soil. As we go down, there is less and less biology in this part of the soil due to basically pH changes as well as uh, oxygen levels in the soil. So this is part of the top zero to 10 centimetres of soil. It is very important for that biological component uh, and the case of establishment of pastures. You can see the very fresh root systems and this in itself will be responsible for a good close relationship between soil biology and plant nutrition. As we go down the soil, we can feel the relative water holding capacities. We've had recent rains, so we've got quite good uh, water storage in the top. It starts to change about this 40 to 50 centimetres. So in this soil, we have adequate soil moisture for about 50 centimetres for future plant growth. It is fairly even textured soil and at about 100 centimetres, as you can see, we start to get the inclusion of rock material or transition more to the parent rock material. This in itself will provide a physical barrier to root proliferation. This would limit the plant roots growth beyond here. But still in all of this, there is no limitation on plant growth due to any subsoil constraint uh, within this soil sample. So we're now collecting the soil sample into the bucket. We're doing the top zero to 10 centimetres to the bucket. We have got our sample now, and we pour the whole sample without touching it with our hands for hygiene regions into the bucket, into the bag. The bag is then closed and sent off to the post office, to the lab. When you're collecting the soil sample, it is very important to use clean, new plastic bags for soil sampling. If you're collecting plant tissue, it is paper bags. It is also important that you name correctly, give a paddock name, the date and the soil depth, as this information will be essential when tracing it at the lab.
Not everybody's going to have access to a specific soil testing trailer, so another option to take a soil sample is using an auger like this. It has teeth at the one end to drill a hole. So the teeth cut clockwise, so just rotate the auger clockwise, biting into the soil. We only need to get down to 10 centimetres in the first bite, as you will clog up the auger with too much. Take it out and collect the sample like yay. That is about 10 centimetres, so it is much better to take multiples of 0 to 10 instead of trying to get a sample of 0 to 30 centimetres. You will then just repeat the process. Sometimes you may collect samples, put them in a clockwise direction if you are getting multiple depths. Another recognised protocol to take a soil sample in the paddock is simply using the shovel. We need to dig a, a hole which is at least 30 centimetres deep and then just take a slither of soil going backwards along a vertical face. The sample is then trimmed and the sample is then put in your bucket.